I'll hand it over to uh, Speaker Sakachi to come up and say a few words. Come on up, Joe. Thank you so much for being here as well. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Thank you Governor. Thank you all for being here today. A very important day for all of Rhode Island. I, I know this has been uh, billed as a you know Women's Day, but it's not. It's 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 a day for everybody, um, especially with equal pay. It's equal pay for everyone, regardless of your sex, your color, your education. It's it's a treatment. It, it's a fairness bill. And it's a long time coming. Uh, before I get into my very brief remarks, I want to recognize my good friends and colleagues who are here today. Uh, I have to start off, of course, with my dear friend and, and my partner in this venture we call the House, leader Chris Blazajewski, who looks refreshed after a 10-day vacation with his family, <laughs> Representative Kislak, uh, Representative Tianzi, <laughs> Representative Messier, Representative Speakman, Representative Kazar, all of them who are here today to show their support for their colleagues, who I'll recognize in a minute, and the work that they've done and we've done as a House to work together to tackle issues that have been long-standing issues that we couldn't get over the finish line. And we're going to continue that advocacy, and I want next year to be as better, if not better, than this year was. And that's a tall order, but I think my colleagues in the House are up to it. Today's an important day. I want to recognize the sponsors and the bills that they have passed. The governor touched on them. I first want to thank Representative Donovan, who is the sponsor of an important bill that protects health care information, uh, and it helps domestic violence victims. The WHIP, my good friend, Katie Kazarian, for her advocacy on a bill that bans insurance companies from gender rating. So women are treated priced the same way uh, in health insurance uh, as men are, and in life insurance as well. Chairwoman McEntee, her bill ensures that feminine hygiene products are available in schools. And that's important because, believe it or not, uh, a, lot of, a lot of young ladies don't have access to that and Representative Justine Caldwell for her continued advocacy that would allow campaign funds to be used for child care. As the governor said, it would allow a whole new generation of people. It may sound simple, it's the federal law, but right now the Board of Elections in Rhode Island would not allow that unless Justine's bill became law. So I'm happy that's happening today. And there's one particular person and one particular bill I want to just touch upon, and she's a dear friend. And she has fought this fight for over four years that she's been in the House. And that's Representative Susan Donovan. And of course, I'm talking about pay equity. This is, but yes, absolutely yes. This is a mountain that was very hard to climb. And Susan did not give up. She did not lose her composure. She did not lose her determination. She kept working harder and harder. And when the path was stopped for, for whatever reason. She just waited and kept went around it and over it, and she just kept fighting the fight until ultimately, after a marathon session on Father's Day, yes, she spent Father's Day with me at the State House, with the business community and the advocates for it, we came to a compromise that worked for everybody. And I want to recognize Georgia. Hollister from Working Families who couldn't be here today for her continued advocacy on this issue. And I want to recognize Bob Goldberg, Sarah Bratko, uh, in the, the business community who worked very hard to advocate their side. And this law, I predict, is it's one of the proudest votes I've ever taken as a member of the House, will become the model nationally. This law blends the Massachusetts fair equity with the Oregon one to make the best possible of both, both versions of the bill. And I predict other states will follow it. And we will be a leader in this, in this field uh, in time. Susan, thank you. Thank you on behalf of everybody in Rhode Island. Thank you very much. And thank you for the way you comported yourself for three years. It's not easy to be frustrated. She did, she did it with dignity and class. And now I'd like to turn it over to my dear friend and my partner in the General Assembly, uh, for, I've known him for many years, but uh, if, if anything, we're even more friendly now than we have been, and I, I just have so much respect for his longevity and, and the way he conducts himself in the Senate. My good friend, Senate President Dominic Ruggiero.
Uh, thank you very much uh, for your kind words, uh, Mr. Speaker, um, and my, my good friend, Mr. Speaker. I want to thank the governor for being here today for signing these uh, important pieces of legislation. Uh, these have been long-standing priorities for the Senate, so important for us that I have mentioned, namely pay equity and ending gender rating in health insurance in every opening day address to the chamber since I have first been elected as president of the Senate. I am grateful for the enduring leadership and perseverance of the bill sponsors. Uh, I want to recognize some of my colleagues who are also here today, who are also involved in this uh, initiative. Uh, Senator Bridget Valverde is here and Senator Alana DiMario. And I want to thank them for their support uh, on this le legislation. The three senators involved here, the Senator uh, Susan Sosnowski, uh, one of the chairs of the Senate, uh, Senator Gail Golden, and Senator, uh, uh, Senator, Senator Majority Leader uh, uh, Bridget uh, uh, Valerie Lawson uh, for their efforts on these legislation. These three senators champion these important bills being celebrated today. They brought stakeholders together, as the speaker has mentioned, which is not always an easy chore. Uh, the pay equity bill has been around for approximately 10 years, uh, that was, and that has been an initiative of Senator Golden. I want to commend her uh, for not only her perseverance, but her tenacity on this particular issue. Uh, these champions have written op-ed pieces and have held press conferences. They've raised issues during committee meetings. They did everything they could to bring these important bills to fruition. Congratulations to each of you. Rhode Islanders are best, better off for your efforts. I also want to thank the House sponsors for their tenacity and for their involvement on, uh, on these issues. And I want to thank Speaker Sakachi for shepherding in a new openness in the House to improve initiatives uh, such as these. So I want to congratulate all those involved. Uh, there are some of the senators that could not make it here today, uh, but they have been involved in this particular issue, and I want to commend them and recognize their efforts. It gives me a great deal of pleasure to uh, introduce one of the sponsors on the House side of the Equal Pay and the Health Communications Legislation, Representative Susan Donovan. Thank you, Governor McKee, state officials, House and Senate colleagues, and advocates for the opportunity to celebrate our accomplishments today. Rhode Island's former equal pay law barring wage discrimination based on sex had not been updated in more than half a century. That law was weak and difficult to litigate. Thanks to new leadership in the House under Speaker Shikarchi, the continued support of Senate President Ruggiero, and the sponsorship with Senator Gail Golden, Rhode Island now has a well-defined and strong pay equity law that will help close the workplace wage gap between women and minorities and their male counterparts. Being a victim of wage discrimination early in my career made this legislation personal to me. This bill represents hundreds of hours of collective work on compromise between the advocates and the business community. So going forward, women and people of color will no longer have to suffer the demoralization and financial loss pay discrimination brings to individuals and families. I am also pleased to have sponsored, to have sponsored again with Senator Golden the confidentially, confidentiality of Health Care Communications and Information Act, ensuring health care privacy to both young adults and those in domestic violence situations. No one should ever have to forego medical care for fear of retaliation or embarrassment. Both these bills represent long overdue progress in the fight for economic justice, equality, and protection for the people of our state. And I am so grateful all, to all those who have worked so hard to make these laws a reality. Thank you.
Send in the golden. Come on up. I'm the MC. You're the MC. <laughs> New role for you. Good morning, everyone. Thank you. Uh, you know, it's it's a pleasure to be here. This is particularly um, moving to be here with Governor McKee signing this bill. The first time I ever met him, I worked for Women's Fund of Rhode Island. I wasn't elected to office yet, and he was Mayor Cumberland, and I went to go talk to him about pay equity. So it is incredible to be here in this moment and see this bill finally come to fruition. Um, and to be with all of you who recognize the importance of economic justice and protections for women and the many, many ways it affects not only women, but all of us uh, when we don't have a just society. So I want to thank uh, Senate President Ruggiero also for um, his unwavering support, uh, particularly for pay equity, all of these years and making sure that we finally got it uh, across the Senate and House floor um, to make it to the President's desk. Uh, this bill passed with bipartisan support, which uh, is incredible to me. And so I, while I don't usually use that, I also, also like to thank <laughs> the minority leader uh, for his support of this bill as well. Um, you know, the bills that we are enacting today chip away at s systemic inequities and long accepted practices that have put women on an uneven playing field financially at work, at home, and even running for office. They represent progress towards the society we deserve to be, one where all people have the opportunity to thrive. You know, yesterday was Black Women's Equal Pay Day, and what that means is a black woman in America must work 214 more days than to earn what a white man earned in 2020. So I'm particularly happy that we're here today to enact the pay equity legislation that I have been sponsoring one form or the other since I came up to the State House and uh, alongside with my colleague, Representative Susan Donovan, who has been carrying the, the same mantle for pay equity in the House since 2018. Um, this bill has, in some version, has passed the Senate several times, but getting across the finish line in, in a meaningful way, took real perseverance, it took significant organizing, and importantly, it took the power of women working collectively to make that happen. So I'd like to thank particularly my Senate colleagues and my House colleagues who have been fighting alongside with us to get this, this bill to the floor. The wage gap cannot be solved with just the Fair Pay Act. It's not just one law. We need to eliminate the tipped minimum wage, raise ge wages generally, ensure access to paid leave continues, and ensure access to affordable and accessible high quality child care. And we may need to make sure our anti-discrimination laws are strong and enforceable. The Fair Pay Act that the governor is about to sign is a critical step to addressing both the racial and gender wage gap. Pay discrimination is about power structures in the workplace that value women less. They're connected and together reinforced, uh, reinforced gender, racial, and other forms of inequality in our society. Cultural norms and workplace structures that are stuck in the past and laws that do not account for the realities of today's workforce and the changing nature of work penalize women. This legislation will ensure that the transparency women need to demand the equality we deserve. Until women are not penalized with lower pay or lack of advancement solely because of their gender or biases based on speculation about whether or not they might have children and what that might mean for their commitment to the workforce, and until they are not paid less for the rest of their lives as a result of the time they spent having and raising their children and caregiving for their loved ones, we will not have equality. Until women do not have, the, have to pay more for their health insurance simply because they are women, we do not have equality. Thank you to the incredible Senator Susan Sosnowski for all the years of hard work you've put into that, uh, as well as with Kazarian, uh, the House sponsor. It has been my pleasure to sit on health committee the entire time I've been in the Senate and vote for that gender rating bill to come to the floor every single year. We also can't say with, we have equality when women 
of young women who are parents of young children cannot run for public office simply because they can't afford the child care necessary to do so. You know, when you run for office, you're expected to be out in the community at all different hours, door knocking, attending events, and the usual structure of child care doesn't really accommodate that unusual work schedule. So, you know, we need the valuable perspective of parents of young children at the state house, both women and men, because that brings with it an entirely different view of looking at the way we pass policies. Um, it, you know, we can use campaign funds to go out to dinner. There's no reason that we shouldn't be able to use campaign funds to be able to pay for the child care that we so much need, both as candidate and as once we're in elected office. And so I'm proud to also be a sponsor of that bill, along with Representative Justine Caldwell, uh, who fought for this bill on the House side and has spoken about her own experiences of running for office as a parent of young children. I'm pleased to celebrate the other measures we are taking today, too, that support and protect women, including the bill to provide free feminine hygiene project products in schools. Senator Lawson has been a strong advocate since she's come up to the State House um, for education, and particular for girls in schools. And so I'm very happy to see that bill come to the floor and make it to the Senate, uh, make it to the governor's desk. And uh, as Representative Donovan mentioned, we are also the sponsors of a bill that would protect the health care privacy by allowing people to request their insurers send health communications directly to them instead of a parent or spouse. These explanation of benefits, as they're called, the bills and more that tell you what you did at the doctor's office can prevent women, especially in domestic violence situations, from seeking medical or mental health care and they can prevent young adults from seeking reproductive care. This law will ensure that all patients can make decisions about their own health without fear. All of these bills are a much needed step towards the transformation we need for true equality, justice, and safety for women. I want to take a last moment to just thank some of the advocates for this bill, uh, for all of these bills in particular. Um, Georgia Hollister Isman of the Working Families Party, Kelly Evans of Women's Fund, and John Wesley and Tanya Harris from Rhode Island Coalition of Domestic Violence, who each worked on some of my bills together. And finally, I, uh, I would like to thank my husband, who is here today. Um, you know, one of the things, I, I've been in office since 2012, and in order to do so, it required an extraordinary commitment from both him and my children uh, in order to uh, make sure that all the trains were running on time in our family. And that is only possible by being married to somebody who also believes in gender equity. So I thank him for his support and being here today. Uh, I will always be grateful to the many people who have worked for so long alongside me up at the State House for um, so many policies that I care about that advance gender and racial equity, and as well as the many who will continue to work to create the world we deserve. Thank you. Senator Susnowski. I will now bring up Senator Susnowski to talk about gender rating. <laughs> Good morning, um, and thank you, Governor McKee, for uh, inviting us to this today. It's a very important day. Um, I'm very grateful to the Senate President and Leader Sakarchi. Uh, we are in a different time in uh, the General Assembly, and bills of this magnitude that we're talking about today have become a reality, and there's a couple of reasons for that. And one is because we have so many women elected in the General Assembly, which I'm very pleased. And the other reason, I'll let everyone else figure that one out. But anyway, I'm very happy where we're at. Um, I have introduced uh, the, the gender rating bill for 10 years. And the Senate has passed the legislation for nine years. And I'm very grateful to the Senate President, um, Chairman Miller, 
uh, the Senate leadership, members of the Senate for their overwhelming support of this measure over the years. And I also really want to thank Representative Kazarian for her sponsorship of the bill because as we know, we all work really hard up here in the General Assembly, but we are working as a team. And if we don't have a strong person over in the other side who continues to advocate and work hard on legislation, things don't happen. So thank you very much, Representative Sari. <laughs> this law will prohibit health insurance companies from charging higher premium rates based on the gender of the individual policyholder, enrollee, subscriber, or member. Women are sometimes charged 10% to 25% to 50% more than men for health insurance providing identical coverage, especially during the age bracket associated with childbearing years. Equal rights mean equal costs as well as equal pay. This bill is a huge step that will end gender discrimination in healthcare in Rhode Island. I'm just so happy about it. This is a day, a great day for celebration. I also want to thank um, the ACLU and all the advocates who worked so hard on this bill, everyone who worked so hard to make this bill a reality. And um, I just really have to say um, how much I appreciate, I'm going to say it, Speaker Sakaji, thank you so much for your leadership in the House. Yay! <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and I am very happy to introduce the next speaker, Representative Catherine Kazarian. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Thank you, everybody. Uh, I am absolutely thrilled to be here on a day where we are seeing multiple bills uh, signed into law, uh, all bills pertaining uh, to women, to making life here in Rhode Island for women better, uh, bills that are all going to make our state a more equitable place to be. Um, I'm especially thrilled uh, to see a bill that I've worked on for now seven years, since 2014, uh, get signed into law. Uh, this bill, again, would ban the discriminatory practice that insurance companies uh, would use to charge women higher premium rates than men. I couldn't believe it when I first heard about it, uh, back in college actually, and was so proud to sponsor the bill uh, here in Rhode Island. Um, I have to also thank my co-sponsor over in the Senate, uh, Senator Sue Sisnowski, who's done an incredible job. She's actually worked on this bill longer than I have. Um, and we are both, again, so thrilled uh, to see it get signed into law today. Um, I do also have to uh, thank our speaker, uh, Joseph Sukachi, who understands these issues, cares about these issues, and is right there working beside all of us, looking to see something get done. Um, I just, I can't thank him enough. And Leader Blazajewski, both of them have worked so hard with us. Uh, and again, we're so excited to see it happen. Um, and of course, to all my women colleagues who have worked with me on these bills, I can't thank you all enough. Your advocacy has made such a difference. So thank you all again today, and I'm looking forward to seeing everything get signed. Oh, and then, of course, I'd like to also introduce a Senator from East Providence, uh, Senator Val Lawson. Thank you. Thank you, Representative. Good morning. I'm honored here to be here today to celebrate advancing women's issues in our state. The law I sponsored requires period products in public school bathrooms in grades uh, five through 12. With its passage, we have ensured the end of period poverty in Rhode Island public schools. Students will no longer have to worry or stress about whether they will be able to attend school on, based upon their access to menstrual products. As a high school teacher, I know firsthand of students who have struggled with this concern. Our students can now focus on what they should be, being successful students. This law is common sense. It's an easy fix that fulfills a basic need. And we should always seize an opportunity we can to support our students and remove obstacles so they can be successful in schools. I'd like to thank the Senate President, as well as House Sponsor Chairwoman McEntee for her work on this legislation. I'd also like to acknowledge uh, Maureen Martin, the former Secretary Treasurer of the Rhode Island AFL-CIO, 
and former president of the Coalition of Labor Union Women. Her advocacy on this issue, she brought the idea to me and has been a fearless ask advocate throughout the process. I'm so grateful to be here today for this bill signing and I hope we can continue to build upon these successes in the future. And I'd like to uh, bring up my house sponsor, Representative Carol Hagan McEntee. Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is great to be here, and I'm honored to be with this fine group of feminists, uh, legislators that I'm sitting with, very proud. And uh, thank you, Governor McKee, thank you, Speaker Sakachi, and thank you, Senate President Dominic Ruggiero, for passing all of these bills that are so good for women. So my bill is the period bill. Um, what can I say about this? I can't believe it took so long to finally get this into law. Um, there isn't a young woman or an older woman uh, in Rhode Island who hasn't experienced a, a humiliating uh, accident in school along the way as you growing up. And we all know how difficult that can be. Uh, putting the sweatshirt around the waist uh, and it goes down the line. But now, Young girls will know exactly where to go to the ladies' room where they always should have been able to go to get the products they need to take care of the situation. So it's good for all women. It's good for women who don't have access to products, and it's also good for any woman who's experienced that situation in middle school or high school. And you ladies all know what I'm talking about. So. Thank you, Maureen Martin. Thank you, Patrick Crowley. And I want to thank the, my uh, Senate sponsor, Val Lawson. She did a great job. So uh, hey, it's a new day for schools in Rhode Island, new day for women. Thank you very much. Next, oh, next in line is Representative Justine Caldwell, Campaign Funds for Child Care. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you, Representative Chairwoman McEntee. Uh, it's a little intimidating to be closing out uh, this group of amazing uh, speakers and my uh, female colleagues who are warriors and sponsor bills that were some of the reasons I ran for office. Uh, as I was sitting here thinking about my bill um, that will allow child care to be paid for by campaign funds, I was remembering my first campaign. Um, where I was out at an event and it was the end of our legislative session and the headline in the Projo that day had been women's issues get left behind as we had closed out the session the year I was running. And I think today could not be a more different day than that and so it is really exciting to be here and I want to thank Speaker Strakarchi and I want to thank the Senate President for their commitment to these issues. Um, I also want to agree with the speaker that this is not just a women's issue. Uh, my good friend Leader Blasajewski and Chairman Evan Shanley, whose House Committee this bill came out of, are also parents of young children and have always been such strong supporters to get people uh, like me and like them to run for office. Uh, being in the House of Representatives in Rhode Island has been such an honor for me, and I would never want anyone not to be able to have that opportunity to speak for their experiences because they can't afford child care. And this bill is so important because it signals a new day in the House and the Senate. It signals from the Speaker and the Senate President that we want to have opportunities for young parents and especially young mothers uh, to be here, to be in the room where it happens, to help us make decisions that is best for the women and the families of our state. So thank you so much. <laughs> 